Hi guys, welcome to Deep Sea Learning. My name is Priscilla and I'm with the Georgia Aquarium Education Department. If this is your first time with us, well, welcome. We're so excited you're here. And if this is your second, fifth, or even 10th video, welcome back. We're still so excited you're here. Today, we're gonna be focusing on all things turtles because turtles are absolutely amazing. So I'm gonna start off with a question. When you hear the word turtle, what is it that comes to mind? I'm gonna say yes. You're probably thinking that it has scales, it lays eggs, it has a shell, and that they're absolutely adorable. Well, turtles are part of a bigger family called reptiles. These reptiles include animals such as lizards, alligators, snakes, and of course, turtles. In the turtle family, there are two sub umbrellas under that where they can be categorized as aquatic turtles or terrestrial turtles. Aquatic, terrestrial, what does that even mean? Well, aquatic means of water. So aquatic turtles spend most of their time in the water. Terrestrial means of land. So terrestrial turtles will spend most of their time on land. Even though these turtles will spend most of their time in a certain location, doesn't necessarily mean they won't go into the opposite location. For example, green sea turtles, like our friend Tank, spend most of his time in the water, swimming, having a good time, but occasionally he will come up to the surface and take a big breath. This right here is a carapace. So we know that turtles have a shell, but carapace is kind of a fancy way of saying shell. And on this carapace, there are a couple different patches. They kind of are different sizes, and some of them are really long, and some of them are kind of shorter along this edge. And those are called scoots, or scales if you like. So the question is, what's the whole point of a carapace? Why do turtles need it? Well, they need it to protect themselves. Terrestrial turtles, we know they walk on land, they have to think about rocks and trees and cars. So they have to be able to completely hide themselves and make sure they protect everything at all costs. While aquatic turtles don't have as many things, they still have to think about other predators and boats and nets. But what really matters is that their heart, their lungs, their tummy is protected. So I'm gonna give you a scenario. Me and you are hanging out and it could be anywhere. We could be at the Chattahoochee River, we could be hanging out on the beach, or we could just be in someone's backyard. And I bring you a turtle. What are some of the things that you think we would possibly look at to determine whether it's aquatic or terrestrial? Well, I'm gonna give you two things. First things first, you're gonna wanna look if it has stompers or flippers. Stompers are kind of what they use to walk on land. So I'm gonna have you kind of grab onto like you have a bike. And you're gonna bring your arms down and you're gonna kind of walk in this motion. So if a turtle walks like this, it's a terrestrial turtle. And aquatic turtles kind of have more of a tapered off arm, kind of like dolphins. And they use it to push themselves through the water. So we know that they have a really cool shell. We know that they're protecting themselves. They have some pretty interesting arms, but the thing is, do they all hide in their shell? Well, no. Actually, terrestrial turtles are the only ones that actually hide in their shell. While aquatic turtles, they cannot, under any circumstance, actually pull their limbs inside. It's pretty cool. Another thing is, what do they eat? They get hungry just like we do, so what do they actually eat? So I have two turtle skulls here. This smaller one right here is a hawksbill turtle, and this larger one is a leatherback, the biggest sea turtle of them all. So we can tell kind of what they eat just by looking at their jaws. So here we could tell our hawksbill has more of a pointed end. It will focus purely on piercing whatever it's trying to get and almost like it's a knife. Same thing on the inside. It kind of daggers in or narrows in just the way a knife does. So what do we use a knife for? We use knives to cut things smaller. We try to break things. And that's our go-to if we can't do it with our own bare hands. So if we use knives to break things apart, then turtles must use theirs to kind of break things apart as well. Well, hawksbill turtles eat sponges, and sometimes sponges can be found on rocks and corals 
and they have to munch at them and pick at them to get to their food. So this Leatherback right here, he kind of has a little bit different shape mouth in the sense that it's not as pointed, it's more rounded. It definitely doesn't look like a knife from just looking at it, but when you open up its jaw, there are some dagger-like points. So if he doesn't have a dagger in the front of his mouth, that means he doesn't require as much strength or as much force to actually pierce whatever they're trying to eat. So if we're thinking about something that isn't as harsh, isn't as strong, it's probably something more on the squishier side, I'm gonna think they eat jellies, which is actually true. Leatherbacks, even though they are the largest sea turtles that we know of, they're even bigger than me, and I'm 5'1". So they require lots and lots of jellies to consume on a daily basis. But as we know, the way this world is kind of working out, there's a lot of pollution. Enough that a lot of our animals are consuming it. And they're starting to think that plastic bags are looking like jellies and they're going to eat them. So what happens when our leatherback sees a jelly that kind of looks like this? Well, they're gonna eat it. And when they eat it, it makes their tummy hurt, they don't feel too good, and we obviously want the best for our leatherbacks, right? So today we've learned actually quite a bit. We've learned the difference between aquatic and terrestrial turtles. We've learned a little bit about their carapace and their scoots. We've also learned about some of the things that they eat and how we can make a difference knowing that pollution is constantly in their way. Well, I challenge you guys today, start making a difference now. Don't wait until tomorrow because tomorrow could be too late. And I'm sure in the future, our sea turtles will happily thank us. Well, I hope you guys learned a little something and we'll see you guys in the next video.